folks. Well, I'm standing here by a dumpster doing some vapes and drinking my coffee. Right now we're in Chicago, huh? outside of a scene. Well, actually a parking lot now as it's become. of a once famous scene Hun. known as... Ah, yes, yeah, sorry about that. The uh, St. Valentine's Day Massacre. It uh, occurred on February 14th, 1929 at 10.30 a.m. And... <clears throat> The details of it are extensive, but suffice it to say that seven people wound up dead in uh, a massacre-style shooting, in which case, well, at which point, uh, a number of Tommy submachine guns and shotguns were used by members of a criminal outfit called Egan's Rats. And one of the important historical moments of this that aren't mentioned on a lot of sites is that it seemed to have had an effect on the conscious of the American public in which gangsters were, well, basically not all shits and giggles. I don't assume that people always thought they were just that, but somehow they would have thought of them as being kind of noble guys who weren't going to perpetuate violence just for the sake of violence or business. But anyway, right now the place has been changed into a parking lot, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And there's a nursing home in the back. I'm not really sure of exactly the name of that nursing home. And it's entirely possible that some of the people who are in it now, well, would they remember something that happened in 1929? That means they would have had to be at least a kid, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So at this point, they would have to be close to 100 years old. While it's feasible, I would say that's somewhat unlikely. And the interesting historical fact that also you won't see in any plaques that would be posted here is that the bricks of the wall where the blood was splattered of those who were cut down were sold to a Canadian collector of various uh, mob related uh, accoutrements memorabilia items and eventually after changing hands a number of times they wound up in the mob museum in of all places Las Vegas which is actually a well, a good long distance from where we are now in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I wish we'd gotten this video maybe perhaps in the, a better light of day, but it didn't work. It's still a beautiful night. Yes, mm -hmm. you say so. Yes. And perhaps maybe Ghost can add some interesting information to some of the rather superficial, but hopefully interesting information I've just told you now. Ah, take the cup of coffee and yes. scepter of power. Warm my yes, yes. Um, so the massacre took place on uh, February 14th, 1949, which is why it was considered the Valentine's Day, Day Massacre. Uh, the perpetrators actually dressed up as, boss, as Chicago police officers. And uh, they came in and they'd set up this st well-planned sting to actually take out the head of the Irish uh, mob. Um, and Capone had authorized this. This has never been proven. It's all theory. Um, and they actually failed to take him out, but they took out a variety of his henchmen and his number two and that kind of stuff that were all there. They had set it up to make the Irish mob think they were buying a really great <coughs> shipment of um, moonshine mm -hmm. um, from at a state that was at a really reasonable price. Um, so when they showed up, the Irish mob thought they were show, doing up to buy this stuff, but then they saw the police officers like, oh, this is just a normal raid. So they listened to everything the police officers told them to do. They gave up their weapons. They l lined up against the wall. And once everybody was lined up, the all seven people, that's when these four individuals shot them down. And then two of them got back into street clothes and walked the other two out in the police clothes back to the police car. The uh, I, head of the Irish mob at the time had seen the police car, thought it was a raid and turned around and drove away. Okay? Mm -hmm. The people in the neighborhood that heard the gunfire and everything saw the police marching these two people off and thought that it was just another raid and no one actually discovered the bodies until later. Mm -hmm. And the police actually had a really hard time proving that they weren't the ones that did it because everybody said, we saw the police mm -hmm. and there was a police car there. So it was an interesting maneuver. It not only uh, colluded to the identity of the perpetrators, but it had implied the cops. Actually, a lot of whom were quite corrupt at that time and were in the yeah. take. Yeah, so um, in the end, they couldn't prove um, who actually committed the crime. 
Um, there was a variety of searches, a variety of suspects. They even took this up thinking that it was the Italian mob's number two, a Capone's like right-hand man. Uh, Capone was actually uh, deemed not to be able to be charged with this crime because he was in Florida at the time. Um, and the one of the reasons this was like a media display was just because of how violent it was. One of the people actually survived with 15 uh, gunshot wounds though the police actually found them later. Um, they stabilized him, he died afterwards. And when he was asked who shot him, he looked them in the eye and said, no one shot me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a moral to be told. Um, so, <laughs> ah, he shot himself. Huh? <laughs> Fifteen times. Um, Still missed. <laughs> the vitals. Um, so my whole thing about this is, uh, when you think about the prohibition, um, everybody thinks that there was this grand experiment that failed. Um, the prohibition to me started with uh, the 18th Amendment that was the War Amendment and then it went up to Senate and Wilson actually vetoed the first bill to prohibition because he thought that prohibition would not have the kind of effect on society that everybody assumed it would. Uh, Congress then got together and went back and had the act initiated by a majority. Um, so it could overrule the veto of Wilson. Uh, interestingly enough, Wilson was correct. It did not have the impact everybody thought it would. The goal of prohibition was to reduce crime and drunkenness and um, a variety of other things. Officially speaking, <laughs> but I'm going to give an additional reason um, for it that may not be described historically. Um, and the end result was that it created the FBI. It created a new variety of new federal agencies. It uh, was the first time that we started truly regulating drugs. Um, though prohibition had been uh, an issue and we had regulated alcohol a variety of ways, but it was always at a state level um, where states had the right. There was the Whiskey Rebellion right after the independence uh, and when they tried to tax whiskey. Um, so we've always had this kind of relationship with drugs and alcohol in this country um, based in a religious, this idea of it being a sin to be gluttonous or intoxicated or whatever. Um, and our current political standing again is about this idea of sin and what's right in this world and why you can tell me what to believe and how to believe and how to be. And we have noticed that this doesn't work, be it for prohibition, the war on drugs, um, access to birth control. You cannot tell an individual how to believe and act and expect them to listen to you if they truly believe in their heart or they have a desire to get drunk off their ass on a Saturday night walking down the street. Oh yes, and not just. <laughs> Or if they don't want to have children, they're not going to have, you're going to have people taking birth control because they don't want to have children. Um, but our society still seems today from 1929 to 2018 to believe that we can tell people not to do something. Well, yes, listen. it goes back to the idea the more things change, the more they stay the same. But I wanted to add an additional little interesting perspective on why the prohibition may have taken place. So let's swap the phone one more time. Yes. There are some people out there who believe, and I'm thinking not entirely inappropriately, that one of the underlying causes of prohibition was that Henry Ford, who actually saw the rapidly expanding automobile market, mm -hmm. had actually made a lot of inroads because originally had competed with the horse carriage market. And this is before the late 20s when cars were really quite rare and mm -hmm. many laws were passed that if a horse saw a car in the road, that mm -hmm. the car would have to honk and be covered with a large blanket. And if that didn't work, it would have to be disassembled. But by the time, you know, the late 20s... Stop moving so much. <laughs> By the late 20s already, there were many cars on the road, and one of the ideas was that Henry Ford wanted to make a car that would have been powered by ethanol. It's a type of alcohol that's actually mm -hmm. drinkable alcohol. The low 
and type alcohol is methanol and that gets tautomerized in your body something similar to formalin when i was in russia for quite a few years you know and i'd be on a playground doing pull-ups dips sometimes the local alcoholics would talk to me and they would smell a little bit like somebody who was freshly embalmed and i know at that point they were drinking the methanol curiously they didn't go blind at least they seemed to be feeling their way around quite well but that's a side issue so to undercut henry ford's attempts at making an ethanol powered car Andrew Mellon, who was backed by a lot of other bankers, passed prohibition mm -hmm. to make cars be gas-powered. So mm -hmm. the real purpose for prohibition was to prevent the automobile industry from getting an ethanol-powered car. The other purpose, as you said, it facilitated the formation of the FBI. Mm -hmm. And later on, when Al Capone was brought down for income tax evasion, the other benefit for the powers that be was that prior to this, while people, you know, were obligated to pay taxes, very few people took it seriously. Mm -hmm. So once a uh, big-time mobster was brought down for income tax evasion, it sent a well, message to the nation. Well, he actually wasn't. Not, let me correct you. Yes. Was not brought down for intact evasion per se it was racketeering that which is actually a new legislative bill that was passed in specifically in order to bring down criminals such as Al Capone well even if it's a historical misnomer that he was brought down for income tax evasion I don't believe that's entirely untrue it still did send a message to the population the IRS did do it yes so okay well there you go but it's, so there you see how nicely it all fell into place we have gas-powered cars the FBI has a lot of funding and Joe Blow has to pay his taxes. And Al Capone is long dead after having gone fishing in a swimming pool with communists because he was afraid of needles and his syphilis went to the final state of its advancement. Really? So, yes, really, yeah. So, yeah. Guys, anyway, this has been an interesting video. Hopefully, we had a good time making it. Yes. You know, um, if you learn something from it, please subscribe to our channel. We're looking to get more subscribers it costs nothing really but when people ask us what is the name of your channel i say we have to get more subscribers so that we can actually give it a personalized name it's actually entirely free and if you like our work well your patronage is always welcome so thank you there is no knowledge that is not power right then yes right and wave goodbye ghost i'll wave goodbye yes and you too yes bye take care so Guys, we're in Chicago here for the uh, International Pipe and Tobacco Show, and hopefully we'll be making more videos for your enjoyment and edification. Yes. Ed edification. Bye-bye. Mm. Bye. -bye. Bye.